Hi, I'm Tom Oliver from Fast Lane Daily. We came up here to Connecticut in this white Cadillac CTS V Sport to test out this red ATS Coupe. Let's see what it can do. So here we have the 2015 Cadillac ATS Coupe with a 3.6 liter V6. It's smooth, it's comfortable, and BMW, watch out. All the materials you find in the ATS Coupe, regardless of trim level, are exactly what they seem. Meaning if you're touching something that looks like aluminum, it is. Wood is actually wood, and carbon fiber isn't just a neat looking visual sticker, it's the real deal. The ATS Coupe comes in two flavors, a four cylinder, two liter turbo, or a 3.6 liter V6. Performance for the V6 comes in at 5.5 seconds to 60 from the 321 horsepower, 275 pound foot of torque motor. What's interesting to note is that the two liter turbo has 272 horsepower and 292 pound feet of torque. However, zero to 60 is in 5.6 seconds. Fuel economy for the V6 is 19 highway and 28 city, which isn't terrible for a 3.6 liter V6 engine. The four cylinder turbo gets an expectedly better 21 city and 30 highway. I would imagine many would opt for the turbo when considering fuel economy, but bear in mind that this engine requires premium fuel, while the V6 runs on regular. Something to consider when deciding on engine selection. The car comes with a six speed automatic transmission. Now, also has manumatic. If you move the gear lever over and you can you know, move the gear lever up and down, you shift. It also has magnesium paddles, which feel really nice to touch, and the transmission's very responsive. There we go, third gear, second gear, and yeah. That sounds awesome. Each engine choice is clearly quick, but the dynamics of the ATS changes due to the reduced weight from the four cylinder. It feels lighter on its toes and the power comes on quick from the twin scroll turbo. I prefer the V6 though for its throatier exhaust note and more linear power curve when getting on the throttle. Yeah, that 3.6 liter V6 roars. I'm a big fan of the way the V6 rear wheel drive version drives. The way the power comes on and how predictable power is throughout. A lot of my colleagues driving this event prefer the four cylinder turbo, which coming with the manual is fun to drive and don't get me wrong, but I felt at home with the V6 being the owner of a six cylinder BMW. A good comparison note, the Caddy ATS handles and drives like a car with some soul. Having been in the 2 and 4 series BMW, which this ATS is going directly after, I would consider the Cadillac first, especially if you're considering a car that's comfortable, seriously quick, and luxurious. If you're in the market for a luxury coupe, I would say that handling is probably on the short list of things that are very important to you. I recently drove the BMW 235i for a few hours, and coming from a BMW 1 series, which I'm an owner of, I was actually disappointed in the way the car drove. Now, let me explain why. First, the car really handles well, but it's active steering and electronic steering, and that's horrible. There is no feedback. You can literally drive the car with one finger, and it's no big deal. This is why I like the ATS Coupe. When you're diving into the turns, when you're driving hard, and you start throwing the steering wheel around, you feel the feedback in the steering wheel. It's not just the G-forces on your body, you really feel the car pulling and pushing into turns, which I think is important for the experience for the driver. That's something I look forward to. You know, it may not be the fastest car on the road, but it doesn't have to be. Because if you find a nice back road that you're driving around, it's freshly paved, it's all windy, that's where you're gonna have the best time. And with a 3.6 liter engine in this car, you're definitely gonna have a good time. Magnetic ride control is definitely an option I would recommend to get with the ATS. It reads and reacts to the road up to a thousand times per second, and those are GM's words, not mine, and makes a noticeable difference in a variety of driving conditions. The feel of the car on the road changes noticeably between the different choices, touring mode and sport. There's also a winter weather setting called snow and ice, but that's meant for those particular conditions which we were unable to test in. But if it's like the CTS, it adjusts the car's throttle response and a few other things to make sure you don't end up sideways or off the road in bad conditions. Now, after all the wonderful things I've said about this, there's the big, big issue, the price. $38,990 starting. But comparing the entry price for the BMW's 4 Series at $41,425 and the Audi A5 at 39895 dollars with similar engine options, you're getting a lot for your money, especially performance. With a 0-60 to 60 of 5.6 seconds, you're a tenth of a second faster than the BMW and 7 tenths faster than the Audi. We drove the Cadillac CTS V Sport on the way up here, 
and that car is fast as hell and it's got every little piece of technology you could possibly imagine available in it. Now the ATS is a little bit watered down compared to that. So I'm gonna put a couple things out there that I wish they did a little bit better. First on the steering wheel, I'm being really picky right here. If you touch and feel behind the steering wheel, you can feel the extra fabric with your fingers. And for me, that's a little bit of an annoyance. Tighten it up. It's one of those little things that if you're a luxury car buyer or you're in the realm for something like this, for this kind of car, you're gonna notice it. The heads up display is pretty cool. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of it, like Omar. <laughs> You know, to each his own. You can tread it off if you want to, but I kind of like it. I see my speed, I see the direction I'm going, I also see the RPMs when the navigation isn't running, and all those things are really important to me because I don't like looking down. Why? Because I'm gonna keep my eyes on the road. Who doesn't wanna keep their eyes on the road? Except when you're texting or talking to your friend on the phone, you know, I'm kidding, don't do that. Coming from the CTS V Sport, which has an all LCD display, which is beautiful, to this gauge panel, I'm a little disappointed. I think they could have put a little bit more details. The nice blue hue and the white lines and stuff like that. You know, it, it looks nice, it's plain, not in a bad way, but if you compare it to the 4 Series or the BMW or the Mercedes, they put a little more detail into their dashes, and I think that's important. I think when you do look down from your heads-up display, you want to see something that catches your eye, that looks pleasant, not just numbers and a little LCD display, you know what I mean? And the LCD display that they do have shows a lot of information. You know, you have your trip odometer, it actually tells you the speed limit of the road you're on if that information is available. You also have your actual speed in digital display, but you can also look at your fuel economy, trip computer, all, you know, all the essentials for a driver. I would definitely take this car on a road trip, by the way, it is that comfortable. And I think the passengers in the back seat will also be comfortable, and if you see, there's actually some lumbar support for them too, so when you're really going hard into the turns, they're not gonna be sliding around too much. But that also means you're only gonna fit four people in this car comfortably. I'm not so sure the fifth person would be comfortable sitting on cup holders. But hey, you know, to each his own. The Cadillac Q system, which is found in this car, is the next generation. It's faster, it's smoother. The car on the map while we're driving is moving smoothly along the road. If you need to do anything like change the climate control, or touch the radio, whatever, you, it's snappy, it's quick, it responds instantly. And my favorite part of this whole thing is that when you're driving and you're ignoring it, it sort of hides all the menu items, but then you put your hand in front of it and it goes, Bop! there it is, it's all really cool. I think, you know, it's like the geek inside is just loving it. Let's rattle it off. It sounds great, it looks great, it drives great, it feels great. The interior is awesome, the design is great. What's not so great? the price. You're gonna have to stomach a little bit of pain in order to get this car. Is it worth it? I think so. But you have to be ready to shell out that dough. I'm Tom Albrecht, thanks for watching FLD Tours. Until next time.